Hello, fifth graders. Um, you might have had a chance to um, do this actual lesson with um, your teacher today uh, in a live uh, lesson. So um, if not, we're going to do a quick five minute overview of that lesson. And uh, maybe you've uh, already been to that lesson, but you want to take a closer look. So that's what we're going to do. So we've talked about types of nonfiction, right? We've talked about reference, biography, and uh, literary nonfiction. Uh, we've talked about text features such as title, uh, headings or subheadings, uh, bold print, photographs. Uh, we've talked about the idea of asking questions while looking at the text features, such as questions you might have before you start reading, questions you have during, and questions after. We've also, earlier this week, discussed main idea. So we're going to take a look at an article over the next two days, today and tomorrow. Um, I'm going to point some things out. I'm going to pose some questions, and um, you're going to go ahead and reread it, do an activity with it today, an assignment, and then you're going to read it again tomorrow um, and do another assignment with it. All right, so first we're going to take a look at this particular article. You can see a photograph right away, uh, interesting. Uh, so we're going to take a look at all the text, not all the text features, but some of the text features to try to get an idea of uh, what this is about. So we're gonna use page four and five in this article, um, and it is an article, nonfiction to answer some questions. Um, what is a mine? What is, a, what is coal used for? And what do you think this story will mainly be about? So as I look at the pages, this is page four, I see a picture of um, uh, maybe a teenager with a pretty dirty face. And I'm looking at the uh, caption next with sunshine, miners attach small oil lamps like the one above to their hats. These lamps provided light in dark underground tunnels. Miners called this light their sunshine. The lamps were dangerous. Their open flames could trigger explosions. So we see the headlamp there. Uh, we move along and now we have the, um, the title of the article. All right, so uh, as we look at the title of the article, it's called out of, or excuse me, the headline, since it's an article, it's called a headline, out of the burning darkness. And then the subtitle is a 14 year old boy, a dangerous coal mine and a horrific accident that would change America forever. Okay, so let's see if I can answer some questions. Amon, what is a mine? Okay, I'm thinking that based on uh, pages four and five, it is down under the earth. Uh, it is a place where miners might have gone to or would have gone to bring coal um, up from um, underneath the earth uh, from mines. And uh, what do I think this story is going to be about? Well, hmm, a 14 year old boy, a dangerous coal mine and a horrific accident that would change America forever. So right away, I think, okay, it looks like this article is going to be about coal mining and an accident that happened and a 14 year old boy who experienced that, right? So um, let's take a look at the first section. And the question I'm going to ask is who we meet. Who do we meet in the first section? What is his job? And what disaster does he encounter? So let's take a look. Main idea, as you read, think about what life was like for children who worked in mines many years ago. Look for the word nerds, <laughs> 10 terms in bold. 14 year old Albert Buckle was staring at death itself. Thick smoke billowed toward him. Flames licked at the ceiling. With each pass second, excuse me, with each passing second, the heat grew more unbearable, but Albert couldn't run away. He was trapped deep, deep underneath in the underground in the coal mine where he worked. As the inferno blazed hotter, people were starting to panic. I see the word inferno in bold print there. Hmm, what could inferno mean in that sentence? Well, as we look around, we might get an idea from context clues such as blazed hotter. 
right? That will be a question for later on your assignment. Everyone is going to die, someone shouted. It was November 13th, 1909 at the Cherry Mine. The coal mine was about 100 miles southwest of Chicago, Illinois. The Cherry Mine is where Albert and nearly 500 other miners spent their days hundreds of feet underground. They worked digging out coal from deep inside the earth. But today, disaster had struck. Albert and the other miners were trapped. They were caught in one of the worst coal mine fires in American history. All right, so hmm. in the first section, my question was, who do we meet? Well, we met 14-year-old Albert Buckle. Uh, what is his job? He's a coal miner. And what disaster does he encounter? Well, there's a mine fire and miners are trapped. All right, in the next section, brisk and bright and brisk, what details does Lewis use to describe the journey into the mine and the mine itself? Why do you think she includes them? So Lewis, uh, Kristen Lewis is the author. So we're doing something called close reading where we're, 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 looking, we're, we're looking carefully and reading carefully to answer specific questions. So that's what we're going to do. Again, what details does Lewis use to describe the journey into the mine and the, and, and the mine itself, why do you think she includes them? All right, bright and brisk. Just a few hours earlier, the day had dawned bright and brisk in the small town of Cherry, Albert. His, Albert, his 16-year-old brother, Richard, and 478 other coal miners got ready for work. They pulled on their overalls, grabbed their lunch pails, and said goodbye to their families. Then they headed off for what they thought would be an ordinary day. I like the way the author did that. They set you up for what they thought would be an ordinary day. Around 6.30 a.m., a whistle blew. It was time to start work. To enter the mine, Albert crowded into a small metal cage with a group of other miners. The cage was then lowered down a shaft, kind of like an elevator. There were two air shafts at the cherry mine. There were the only ways to get in and out. After a 30 second drop, the cage stopped 317 feet below the surface. The miners stepped out into the damp cold air. They had arrived in the cherry mine. The mine was like a vast underground city with three main levels, a maze of tunnels and passageways stretched for miles. So what details does she use to describe it? Well, she talks about the 30 second drop she talks about them being stuffed into a cage together, very small area. And she talks about how deep they go and then they step out into the mine, all right? She, she does a good job of, of describing that it looks like an underground city with many levels. Why does she do that? Well, she's doing that to help you understand that, hey, this boy is 14. He's only about three years older than you. So can you imagine being stuffed into a cage which, with a bunch of other um, teenagers and men at that time, and then going down as far as they've gone, 317 feet, and into this, almost like this city underneath the earth. So she's trying to get you to visualize uh, what it would be like to be a miner. All right, we're not going to read the entire article together. You're going to be doing that mostly on your own, a little bit today and tomorrow. Um, so let's take a look at the picture on page seven. And let me go to page seven. So the top of page seven right there, right? What does it add to your understanding of the article? So as you look at the, as we look at the picture on page seven, I see the photograph and I see a caption, trapper. A trapper opened and shut doors to let mules and coal cars through. These doors were part of the mine's ventilation system. The doors kept fresh air in and bad air out. All right, so as I look at this picture, I see a fairly young boy, again, very dirty, not looking thrilled, looking like he's working very hard. So um, how does this add to our understanding of the article? Once again, we see very young, very young boys are working in mines at this time. Uh, they should be in school, right? But no, they're working in mines. We also see that it's they're very, dirty conditions underneath the mine, probably not very healthy because they also describe what a trapper does, letting bad air out, which means there's bad air down in the mine, trying to let some fresh air in, right? So 
Let's take a look at the section called difficult and dangerous. What laws existed about children working? Why would parents let their kids work in dangerous mines? So as we go to difficult and dangerous, and I know we're skipping around here because you'll have a chance to read the whole thing. We're going to try to answer those questions using our close reading skills. Mining coal was a tough and dirty job. Day after day, miners blasted through rocks with dynamite. They cut out the coal with heavy tools, their backs aching. They shoveled the coal into cars that looked like giant, looked like giant metal buckets. Then mules pulled the coal cars along metal tracks, like the tracks on a roller coaster. The tracks ended at an air shaft. From there, the coal was carried up the shaft to the surface. And it wasn't just grown men <clears throat> who toiled in the mines. In the early 1900s, thousands of children like Albert did too. Some were as young as eight years old. Think about that, third graders. In 1885, the US government had laws about who could work in mines. Children had to be at least 12 years old, but the laws were often ignored. It's hard to understand why parents would let their kids work in dangerous mines, but many families were very poor. They faced a terrible choice. They could send their children to work or watch them go hungry. In fact, Albert and Richard likely felt proud to work at, at the mine. Their father had died a few years earlier. It was up to them to support their mother and little sister. All right, so let's see. In Difficult and Dangerous, what laws existed about children working? So children had to be at least 12 years old to work in mines, but we saw that those laws were broken. And uh, why would parents let their children work in dangerous mines? Well, it was the choice of either letting their children work in dangerous situations or watching them starve because people were very poor. Okay, let's take, let's jump around and take a look at a section called scorching heat. What caused a fire to break out in the cherry mine? Why was the fire particularly difficult to put out? So let's find scorching heat. And let's do some close reading here. You heard the questions I asked. So let's take a look. Not long after lunch, Albert opened the door for a car filled with hay, food for the mules. Um, a few moments later, another miner came up to Albert. Fire, he shouted. Somehow, oil from a lamp had dripped into the hay car, setting the hay on fire. Albert rushed to get a pail of water. Still, he, he probably didn't fear for his safety. Small fires could usually be put out easily, but this, but the time out by the time Albert returned, it was clear that the, this fire was different. The smoke was already thick. He tossed his pail of water onto the flames. It did nothing. Worse, the hay car was stuck under the air shaft. The fresh air was fanning the flames. Albert needed to get out. He and a few others rushed for the shaft to take a cage to the surface, but cage operators stopped them. He said the fire would soon be out. They should go back to work. But as the minutes passed, the fire got bigger and hotter. Soon the mine itself was on fire. Only then did, did the call go out for people to get out of the mine. As Albert finally climbed into the cage, he called to a friend to warn others, including his brother, Richard. Hundreds of men were spread throughout the tunnels. So according to Scorching Heat, what caused the fire to break out? So oil had poured onto the hay um, and the hay caught on fire, uh, which caused the fire to, which, you know, hay burns very easily. Um, why was this particularly difficult to put out? Well, they, they talked about the air shaft. The air was coming in, which was fanning the flame because fire needs air in order to burn, these oxygen in order to burn. So the air caused the, the uh, fire to get worse and worse. Uh, so this was difficult to put out. And the, the, the wagon with the hay was kind of stuck in that air shaft. So it was just fanning the flame. So we did something called close reading where we talked about questions. We, we, I asked you questions. And then we went ahead and we looked very closely to find the answers, right? So these are teacher questions, of course, but if you ask yourself questions while you're reading nonfiction like this, you have a much better chance of focusing on the selection. 
you should always stop and pause, ask yourself questions, ask questions uh, that you don't quite, uh, you know, for things you don't quite understand and go ahead and read carefully to try to answer those questions. All right, we talked about that before, before reading questions or reading questions then after reading questions. Um, I hope after this, this also gets you interested in maybe working conditions for children uh, long, long ago. And maybe you'll, um, you know, maybe you'll get on Google and, and check out working conditions back in the 1800s for children, even the um, early 1900s. So the main ideas. So the main idea, what is this mainly about? All right. It's about a dangerous fire that occurred in a mine many, many years ago. Uh, you can also say it's about the dangers or working the bad working conditions that miners faced many, many years ago. Um, so the that is the main idea of the selection. And then we had a bunch of supporting details talking, you know, we, we learned about how they had to go deep down into the mine. We learned about mine fires, how dangerous it was, the bad air. So there were a lot of supporting details to support the main idea that mining many, many years ago was dangerous for many, including for very young uh, boys at that time. All right, so I want you to read the article and then you're going to go ahead and do an assignment uh, where I ask you questions. Uh, you can go back and forth. Please go back and forth between the article and the assignment. Do some close reading. Make sure you're also reading the entire article on your own. And I don't mind if you get help from an adult at home because this is a bit challenging. Um, and good luck. And I'll see you tomorrow. And we'll do another activity with the same exact article.